Every year, the Knoxville Police Department investigates a number of homicides. Most are solved and cleared thanks to the hard work of the officers and investigators, but some remain a mystery. These cases are still open, weighing on the minds of the victims' loved ones and the detectives that work them. This is one of those cases. She grew up like one in seven kids. She went by Leanne specifically, mostly, Lily or Pocahontas. I remember the night before we all had went to the fair. On September 15th of 2007, police received a call from a neighborhood resident that there was a body found near Hoyt Street, near Boone Street, in a secluded area. Investigators responded and located uh, a female partially burned face down. The female turned out to be a Jennifer Leanne Law. She had bruises on her face and her arms consistent with the struggle. The cause of death was strangulation, and then post-mortem was the, the burning of the body. She frequented areas of high narcotics trafficking and things like that. Investigators believe that she may have been involved in prostitution at the time, so her daily routine was not a routine per se. Well, that evening we ended up at my house, all of us, and my father pulled us in the room and had told us that we no longer had a mother, that she had passed away. I remember dropping to my knees and screaming, yelling. She had many struggles anything to get her fixed, her drug. She was loved. She was a sister, I mean a mother, a daughter. She was a lot to us. She wasn't just some girl running around the streets, you know. She did love us and she showed us that up until the day she died. I'm missing out a lot. She doesn't see my baby growing up, my sister's baby. There was a lot that my grandmother and aunt had to teach me because my mom wasn't there. It could have been an accident. I mean, it could have been an, a fight that got out of hand, but it was definitely a personal encounter. The bruising on her face, the strangulation, there was a struggle of some sort. This isn't something that you normally see. In looking at the autopsy and the fact that her body was burned after she was dead tells me there was some sort of attempt by the suspect to cover up any evidence that was left. Her sister remembers seeing her uh, possibly uh, in seeing a black truck, but she also heard that she was last seen in a gold Toyota Corolla. The sister stated that she had a drug dealer that she used by the name of Black, who drove a gold Dodge Intrepid and a black Cadillac. The most current boyfriend investigators attempted to interview him on the day after the incident. He refused to talk. There are multiple possibilities there, and then again, the, the possibility that she was picked up by someone that she didn't know. It's been a long time. And people, I feel like a lot of people just brush it off like it's nothing, but it's a big deal to us. September is definitely the time of the fair. Uh, so the fair would have been going on at that time. If they, anybody that's seen her on September 14th or 15th or spoken with her on the phone, anybody that has information about the drug dealer Black or any of the vehicles that we've discussed or anybody that may have overheard some information. If anybody 
remember seeing fire in the area. I would encourage you if you had, even if you've spoken to investigators in the past, to please call me. There's not a day that goes by we don't think of her. And I know that someone will find it in their hearts to help us out and give us the information we need to put this aside and to put our hearts at ease. Thank you. If you have any information on this case, please call Investigator Madison at 865-215-7021 or call Anonymous to the crime hotline at 865-215-7212.